All right, guys, I'm going to show you how to create this long shadow effect in Canva, which is, I believe, a premiere. I haven't seen any tutorial on the internet about this. I found uh, some tutorials about how to do this with other software like Photoshop or Illustrator, but not with Canva. So because we love Canva so much, we want to be able to do our favorite effects and things. Uh, with Canva, of course. So I figured out a way to create this long shadow effect. So let's do this. Let's uh, build one. All right. So first, let me show you the result. This is what we are going to accomplish with uh, with Canva. As you can see, this has been done with Canva. So let me show you how to create this effect. First, we are going to start. This is a Facebook post Canva. So uh, the dimension of a Facebook post because I wanted to show this in our group. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is to select a color palette. So I found one here that I like uh, and I'm uh, playing around with the mono color. So if you if you are on the Canva palette tool, like a color palette tool, choose the mono color because we are going to play between different shades of the same color. All right. So the one in the middle is actually the one from your big rectangle right here. So first uh, I'm going to select one of the clearer one, the lighter color. So this this blue right here, I'm going to click here to copy it. Hey, do you want to learn how to use Canva like a pro? Well, I can certainly help you with that and teach you all of my secrets. I have put together a five hour master course about Canva that will take you from zero to Picasso in only one day. If you like that idea, make sure you click on the first link in the description below to get your discounted coupon. And I'm going to open uh, my Canva window again and just change the background to this color. So I'm pasting the color right here. So I have a, I have a light background. Pretty good. Now I need my text. So I'm going to type long shadows, right? So this is the text I'm going to be using and I'm going to select a font which is quite bold. So I'm going to go for League Spartan and we are going to go for all caps. All right. In only one line. And I want this to be snapping. First, I want this to be bigger. So I want this to be like, let's say 56. All right, then I want to snap the text box exactly to the size of this text, right? Like this. And I'm going to center this right in the middle of my uh, canvas. All right, so long shadows. Let's get rid of the S because I don't want the word to be too long, actually. So let's just say long shadow. Get rid of the S. Let's resize the text box again like this. And now I want to center this. So two options to center this. You can go like just snapping it in the middle like this. Or you can do position and then middle and center. And I'm showing you this, though it's the most, the most complicated way to just center one element on, on a page uh, because we are going to use this later. All right, so this text is perfectly centered. I'm going to give this, this text in another color. So back to my color palette, I'm going to choose the middle color for this text. All right, so click on it. And then I'm just going to add this to my palette right here. OK, so long shadow. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to select this word, copy it, I'm going to bring it down here and change the color to the darker color. So I'm selecting the darker color of my spectrum right here. And again, adding this color to my palette. There, now I have long shadow here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to position it on top exactly of the other word, and I'm going to push it back, backwards. Now with the arrows and the box still being uh, selected right there in the in the background, I'm going to move it two pixels to the left, no, sorry, two pixels to the right and two pixels down. But of course, this is because I want the shadow to be positioned to the left, to the right, sorry, of my of my design. If I want the shadow to be positioned to the to the left, I would move it the other way. But uh, so I'm going to move it two stroke of my arrow uh, to the to the right. So one, two and two uh, down one, two. Good without touching my mouse or anything else. So the, the this word long shadow is still selected. I'm going to copy one more time there. And then I'm going to bring this back down a little bit. And then again, position backwards. 
Okay, so I still have this. So now you will select this word, just bringing your mouse from the bottom. If you bring your mouse from the bottom, you will hit this one first. So you just do this and you can move this box right here. Again, you position it exactly on top of the other one and then you move with your uh, keyboard arrows. So until you see it like past the first shadow and then again, two to the right, two down. Okay, and then again, you continue this process, copy, you bring it down and it's important to bring it down otherwise, otherwise things get messy. Uh, position to the back and then again, you select it from, be from below, put it right on top of it, and then you will start moving it until you see it passing the first shadow. See, one, two, one, two. So pretty good. And you can adjust slightly so that, so that the lines uh, seem to be actually flowing. Right, so you can copy again, and then you can repeat this process bring this to the back again you will bring it close to your existing shadows and then you just continue them a little bit like this and then you copy it again and don't worry we won't do this a thousand times i'm going to show you the next step very soon but i need to have at least a couple of them so uh, copy again to the back make sure you select the right one Okay, something like this. All right, so this is pretty good enough for now. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna zoom in. You can see it's not perfect, but it's going to do the trick. So not zoom too much about this. So 100% and I'm going to select the first layer. So the our original text. Then I'm going to select all the other layers and group them. And then I'm gonna make a copy and now what I'm going to do is just try to try to uh, position this group in such a way that it continues the shadow and then it doesn't matter if it's on top or in the back I'm just going to copy this one more time I, what I want to do is to make sure I'm kind of continuing these lines without getting too much out of line so this would be too much out of line this would be not enough but you see this uh, this line right here, I'm trying, just trying to, to make this edge more or less straight. And I know it's not straight, and, I, and we are going to correct this in a, in a moment. Uh, so don't worry too much about this. Okay, again, I'm just going to copy this a few more times and just try to continue these edges. And of course, the, the bigger your block is in the beginning, the easier it gets. So um, maybe if you want to go a bit faster, what you can do is this, like degroup, ungroup most of your shadows right there and try to select them all, copy it once, and then you have a much bigger block to play with. So let's do this. And let's do it one more time. This. And one last time. Okay, something like this. You see, it's not perfect. You see these lines, these edges are not straight. But that's okay. I think I can correct this. So now we have this. Let me show you. We have something like this, which is not perfect. It's It still looks quite messy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to position this one back to the center to see how it looks. So using my position, middle, and then um, center here, and then bring this forward to the front, actually. So this is how it looks right now. It's not perfect, so don't freak out. Uh, just be patient. We are going to correct these edges. And uh, for this, I'm going to show you the little trick. So the trick is to copy this page. So I'm going to copy this page. All right, so that's the copy. Let me zoom out so you can see clearer. I don't need all this, so I'm going to get rid of it. And this 
background, I'm going to use my uh, darker shade. Okay, so the shade that I use for my shadow. And I'm going to export this page number three with my darker shade, right? Okay, page three. There we go, so this is my solid. I'm going to save this to my desktop. All right, save. I'll just call it like dark green, it's fine. Now I'm going to go back to my desktop and just bring this boom back to Canva. So this is the little trick and good, we don't need this page anymore. All right, so now I need to correct these edges. I need to make this straight, right? So the way to do this, I'm going to use a grid, make it very small. All right. And the reason I use grids and not rectangles is that grids can be adjusted much easier or even lines, grids can be adjusted much easier. So I will need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of these babies. So I'm just going to create one first. And then from my upload, I take this solid, I drop it in my grid. And then I can kind of, I will rotate this 45%. And thanks to the new tool right here, I can exactly see how many degrees. So 45 degrees. And I will bring this about here. And I see it's not 45 degrees. So I'm going to have to reduce this rotation right here. And just find kind of a similar angle to this one and just position my um, my solid my my grid at the right place so leave it selected the trick here to play around with this feature and this trick I'm showing you guys is to really um, be patient and it's a precision work so you will have to use your um, keyboard arrows in order to uh, obtain the exact and desired effect that you are looking for. The idea is to, to kind of cover up the, the part we've been messing like and not being able to reproduce correctly. Right, so this is pretty decent. Let me see the, how it looks here close to the letter. So I'm going to push this back uh, position backwards. Okay, so this first edge is pretty much done. There's a little, little bit of um, mistake right here, as you can see. Let me zoom out, zoom in a little bit more so that you can actually see this little tip right here. Um, so what we are going to do to correct this is to, let me think, how can we correct this? This is not ideal. I'm gonna zoom in all the way and see if I can correct this with a rectangle. I made a very big rectangle here, guys. So as you will see, this is um, kind of an artisanal way of doing things with Canva. So I'm starting to experiment with this because, well, if you like Canva, you want to be able to produce all sorts of designs with Canva and sometimes just it's just not possible to do it. So you have to find uh, little tricks to be able to do things you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. So my trick right here is to cover up, since there is no eraser in Canva, I will just uh, go to cover up, to cover up this pixel it's almost only one pixel but it needs to be covered and of course you give the color of your background to this rectangle let's see no all right so this is pretty good it's not perfect a hundred percent but really to avoid this kind of cover-up you need to be more precise when um, when you design your first layers. 
So the, the, the long exercise of copying one, moving it one or two pixels to the right uh, and one or two pixels down, this is where you need to be precise. I did it too fast, so that's why uh, my edges are so rough right here, but still, you can still, uh, as I was showing you, correct them. So I'm going to copy this one, bring it here, and I need to make this smaller because we are going to correct the other edges, edges of our design. So bring this to the letter L right now. So what you need to do is to make sure, let me zoom in, to make sure you correctly align with the angles of your letters, right? You don't want, this one is gonna be a little bit more tricky because there's a big mess up right here. So how do we do this? It's supposed to be something like that. Okay, and we are going to copy this again and bring this rectangle to its zero degree angle. So no rotation. We are going to position this one Something like this. So as you can see, it's really artisanal. But the idea is to cover up our mistakes. So I'm going to position this one back. And same for this one. Okay, so it's not 100% perfect for now. But it's a game of correcting and really playing around with these letters, these shapes. So now I'm moving my main text right here, and now it looks better. All right, so let's continue aligning these edges, smoothing these edges with our technique right here that we are using of simply covering them up with lines, which are in reality not lines, but um, grids. So, just moving things around. All right, so still around the 45 degree. Let me see. I need to make this thinner. And let's see. So now we are going to tackle the end part right here. So this is way too big to start with. As you can see, it's a kind of a tedious task but you will be pretty happy about the result once it's finished because it's something that will definitely not be found everywhere since it's so hard to produce so this is almost advanced guys so advanced canvas stuff <laughs> uh, but it's good sometimes to go and produce something a little bit more difficult than what we used to do and challenge ourselves so i would recommend that you you try and maybe you would see, oh, Ronnie, this is too hard. It's not for me uh, right now, but that's fine. You can um, keep this for later. But me, I just wanted to accept this challenge. I've been thinking about this one tutorial for a while now and uh, pretty happy I found the solution. So um, similarly, I'm going to position this one. So once it becomes really precise, you just use your arrows. Okay, and you have to zoom in to make things snap. This is pretty good. Now I have to push these back, backwards. Okay. All right, let's see. The end looks good. All right, let's try the other part of this end right here. It's a very long process, so I'm going to speed this part up. But basically, I'm just going to reproduce the same technique until I finish all my edges. All right, so this finishes it. Let me see by zooming out. So the edges are pretty smooth right now. So this is good. There's just two small adjustments I would, I would like to make. Uh, first one is the S right here. 
Let me zoom all the way in so you can see there's a tiny bit of um, non-perfection here. So I'm going to correct this. And wh where's the other one? Uh, the rest is pretty good. So it's just this little bit of um, mess up here with the S. So again, we are going to do the same trick with the rectangle, right? Um, so if I remember correctly, yes, my rectangle was here. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy this rectangle. Okay, so it, now it's here. I'm going to change the color of this for now so I can see what I'm doing. Let's give a completely different color. And of course, reduce its size to a very tiny dot. Let's see. I need to zoom in much more on this. Okay, so we're going to do something like this. And it's going to be tiny, tiny, tiny. So maybe we just move it with our arrows so it goes faster. And if you hold on shift, it goes faster to move it down. Okay, so now it's really a precision work right here. Okay, let's see how this looks. And not really. Maybe I will have to rotate this a little bit, something like this, and now we can give it the color and see if it fixes our problem right here with the S. Yes, it does. So this is it, guys. I would say this is pretty much the result we wanted to create. So now we can delete these things and we will select all the layers, every single layer, and move this so that we can create, we can still see the effect of this text. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we, we have all the layers selected, we are going to make this uh, whole thing bigger. And now we can really see the beauty of this. Maybe center it, something like this. Uh, but then we can still see the bottom, so we need to hide the bottom of this. So let's see. So this is how it looks. You can make this bigger. It's actually too big because the words are too big. But what I can do is simply position this wherever I want it. So if I want it in the middle of my page, let's say something like this. It's pretty nice. Then I will go back to this line right here, which is here. Got it. Make this longer. And this, of course, you have to be careful. You're not moving everything here in your design. So you make it to the end. OK, let's zoom in to see if we didn't mess up anything. Our rectangle here. Just a minor adjustment. Okay, so this is good. And now what we can do is just add a, a, a big rectangle that will come and cover up this part at the bottom. So just rectangle, something like that, and make it bigger. So this will definitely do it. Uh, all right, and then make another one. Copy this shape, make it smaller, and we are going to cover this other part right here by rotating this shape right here. And this should do the trick. So you can see this exercise, I would say, is now we finished and our long shadow looks pretty good so this is how you do it guys it's a little bit tedious as you would have noticed but it does the trick uh, the promise of creating long shadows with canva is um, is being held and uh, there you go you have your tutorial about creating long shadows with canva the trick is to play with uh, duplicating your text and then aligning as best as you can before smoothing out the edges with 
uh, grid that you will fill out with your darker color, the color you use to create the shadow. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Go ahead and practice. Uh, for me, I'm not gonna lie, it took me about an half an hour to create this long shadow, so only two words. So I suggest you use uh, short words, not sentences, definitely, short words, like maybe one or two words. And then I invite you to post your design with long shadows in our Facebook group. Um, that would be pretty cool if you can do that. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.